unforgettable classics have one thing in common. They're written by the greatest songwriting team in pop music history. <laughs> Brothers Brian and Eddie Holland partner with Lamont Dozier to write for legends like the Supremes, the Four Tops, Martha and the Vandellas, Marvin Gaye, the Temptations, Michael Jackson. Listen, I could go on and on and on, but I won't. <laughs> Please welcome Rock and Roll Hall of Fame members and authors of the new book, Come and Get These Memories, which is named after a Martha and the Vandellas song that they co-wrote, mm -hmm. Eddie and Brian Holland. Hey! You were raised by your mom and your grandma, and often you were singing in the street corners mm -hmm. with friends. Uh, and he was signed as a singer by Motown Records founder Barry mm -hmm. Gordy. Mm -hmm. um, and you had a hit record before, and you didn't have to do all of this. Why did you give up sing, so, uh, singing for songwriting? Well, the, it was hard work. <laughs> singing is hard work. Yes. And I, and I learned that quick order. Right. <laughs> when I started doing a, a, a few of the theaters and travel around, I said, man, this is hard. <laughs> I would watch The Temptations and, and the, uh, the Vandellas and different people on there. I said, it looked easy. Right. It's hard yeah. work. Mm -hmm. And it's, it just wasn't for me. People yeah. without it, songwriting talent find this hard work, too. It wasn't for me, <laughs> but I couldn't yeah. write at all. Mm -hmm. I only started writing after I was doing it for a while. And, uh, well, to be honest, I looked at a royalty statement and all the, the all they made all the deductions, yeah. all the deductions, mm -hmm. you know, and, I, and my brother, he looked at his royalty statement, his eyes got big. He was only about 17 years old. I said, I said Brian, did you, did you got money with that? He said, yeah. <laughs> so I said, I said, what do you? He said, I said, let me see that. And I saw, well, I don't know, it was seventeen thousand, so eight thousand. Right. I said, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm in the wrong business. Right. Right. I said, I'm gonna start writing songs. Yeah. So I took two years to learn how to write songs. So Brian, yes. Brian. So besides the money, you had some girlfriends along the way too. I <laughs> yeah, in I did. In the book, you talk about your relationship with Diana. Yes, I did. Tell us about it. I loved, <laughs> first of all, I did, I truly loved Diane Ross. Yeah. I was mm. passionately in love with her, right. you know, and she felt the same way I did. And um, so we had a great relationship um, for a long time. So, but it ended, you know, mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. But you um, were both married. Stuff happened. That's yeah. why. Stuff. Right, yeah. <laughs> That could change things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, Eddie, in the book, you talk about uh, how Barry Gordy was a mentor to, to you both, but eventually you left Motown, actually, to, uh, to start your own record labels, and um, Barry was not happy about that. And for years, there were lawsuits between both of you. Many years. And <laughs> many years of lawsuits, uh, and Barry Gordy gave you guys your big break, uh, though, and why did you leave Motown, and um, how is your relationship with him today? Well, first of all, I didn't look at it as if he gave us a break because mm -hmm. there was nothing there to give us mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. we started. I mean, the Supremes weren't successful. Right. Four Tops weren't successful, so it was nothing there. And the, and the beauty of the company is that the philosophy was you made your own way. He yeah. only laid out the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It was up to you to do, do what right. you could do. Right. And mm -hmm. that was the beauty of the company. And it was very, very tough, very, very tough competition. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, we got together, you know, and Brian and I and Lamont, and we started coming up with the songs. Now, at first, Smokey was coming up with so many mm -hmm. hits. Mm -hmm. We didn't think we'd ever get a record out. <laughs> That's what sometimes we would, we would comment. Will we ever get a record out of here? But fortunately, they had this group, the Supremes. They couldn't get a record on them. And we said, hey, and that was our opportunity. Oh. We took advantage of it. Excellent. Mm. Yeah. Well, in the audience is one of the original members of The Temptations. Yes. We, we saw you oh, earlier, Otis Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Besides having these two um, write many of your songs, including uh, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, what do these two men mean to you? They, uh, they meant the world to me because, like I said in the dressing room, we used to be uh, Eddie's uh, chauffeur, played behind, because he had a record out called Jamie. And so we travel 
long time ago, back oh. during the early 60s. And when we got back to Detroit, he said, man, later for this, I'm not going to hit the road. <laughs> but to watch them grow up to be profoundly wonderful songwriters and producers, but they always stayed human. In the sense, they never got beheaded right. or nothing. And I love them for that. Well,